want some fucking toast. What? Bread, the giver of life, the feeder of the 5,000, the literal body of Christ, but more importantly, the key ingredient to an almighty BLT sandwich. But when you take this seemingly ordinary looking food and stick it over a heat, boom, you get toast. The preferred breakfast choice of people on the go, a staple of the full English breakfast, and also the food of choice for students too poor to afford actual food because they spent all their EMA money on Jaeger bombs. And it's this humble ingredient that the developers over at Bosa Studios decided to make the star of its very own video game. I am bread. Now I bet you're gonna say, Steve, you six foot four homunculus of human flesh and personal issues, that's not scary. That's just a game about playing as a sentient piece of bread. Why in the fuck did you pick this for your Halloween special? Hey, not everything has to be Five Nights at Freddy's or Resident Evil to be scary. So just wait until I show you this and then you will understand why. Right from the word go, this game starts you off in a nice happy kitchen environment. It's bright, it's colourful, and the music is so chirpy and happy sounding that I have to drink this bottle of sadness juice to stop myself from dying from a happiness overdose. Ah, nothing beats the taste of repressed memories. There are several modes to choose from that offer different gameplay styles. There's a mode where you play as a fragile piece of cracker bread on the hunt for blocks of cheese, a race mode where you play as a bagel and have to roll around the place to the finish line, a mode called Zero G where you use mini rocket thrusters to move around, and a mode where you smash the shit out of everything as you can for points as a baguette. There are also some bonus modes which are crossovers with other properties like Goat Simulator and Team Fortress 2. And there's also another mode called Starch Wars, which is a Star Wars parody that replaces all the ships with bread. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give this one a miss. But the mode that we'll be focusing on today is the game's story mode. And yes, this game has a story. Brace yourself. The story begins with a shot of a therapist's report card from somewhere called the Therapy Barn. These appear at the start of each level, and on the surface they appear as nothing more than a humorous way to pass time during the loading screens, but if you actually stop to read what these cards say, you'll be surprised at how dark and serious this game's story actually is. Mr. Merson spent most of his sessions talking about his past, mainly focusing on his failed business, Merton's Merchants, and the subsequent divorce from his wife? Oh my god! He moved on to threatening the council again as well as the local carpet world. The session ended with him angrily stating that he was going shopping with the intention of eating himself to death. He appears to be dealing with multiple stress points and focusing all of his anger towards the council, two of which he still claims are responsible for the downfall of his business. I believe him now being employed by the council as a street cleaner is exacerbating the issue. Yeah, no shit, if I'd lost my marriage and my job and had to take a job because I was so desperate working for my arch nemesis, I think I would be a bit exacerbated about the whole thing too. I think that'd be putting it quite fucking lightly, to be fair. I've suggested that he accepts at this time that things are not going his way, but a positive outlook is imperative. We have another session booked for tomorrow. The shopping trip should take his mind off events whilst I review potential solutions. Become toast. <laughs> oh god, that tonal whiplash was strong. God, ah, I think I may need a doctor. So here we are, we're in the kitchen, I'm a piece of bread, and now all we have to do is to get to that toaster over there and become toast. <laughs> I mean, how, how hard could it be, right? Literally fucking impossible. Okay, so let's talk about how you actually play this game. To move around, you use the analog stick to flip and flop your slice of bread in any direction that you want. Then you have a button assigned to each corner, which you then use to grab onto a surface and climb up it like Spider-Man. You know, just like real bread. So as you can probably tell, this is a physics-based platformer where you have to use your own momentum to traverse each level to get to the end goal of becoming, well, toast. But it's not just getting to the goal that you have to worry about, you also have to be edible as well. Throughout each level, there are hazards that can reduce your bread's edibility, or health, giving you a lower score at the end of the level. These can range from stains to ants, spilt food, dirty water, dirty walls, but most importantly, the floor! <laughs> If you touch this bad boy, it will drain your health faster than a vampire on cocaine. So, you know, just don't touch it, okay? Cool. 
We cool? Cool. The kitchen as a location is a great starting point too, as most players will likely know exactly what to look for to become toast right from the get-go. But going forward, the levels shift to drastically different locations where becoming toast requires more out-of-the-box thinking. Even the mechanics used to move around is a big test of your coordination. You have to not only remember what button corresponds to what corner of the bread, remember what orientation you are, work out how to get where you want to go, but you also have to do all that and manage a grip meter at the same time. So you're forced to apply all that critical thinking into a short space of time and can't always wait to take your time with decision making. Your grip does recharge when you're on a flat surface and not holding onto anything, so at least there are some moments of reprieve. God, could you just imagine having to do this game on a limited grip meter? Jesus. Also, you think this guy in the story is having a bad time? I need a therapist just to help me get over the stress of trying to get into the fucking toaster. Ugh, come on. Left a bit. Right a bit. That's it. Just come, come on. Oh, come on! I'm upright, for God's sake! I'm over the fucking hole! Get in there! Oh my god. Once you finally start to become toast, a separate meter appears showing you a percentage of how toasty you are, and also how much of the bread surface has been toasted on either side. Get it to 100% and you get a higher score, but go too far over and you become burnt toast, and can fail the level and have to start all over again. And as we all know, nobody likes burnt toast. How to get burned? How to get burned? How to get burned? How to get burned? Right, now that we've beaten level one, let's move on to level two and read our next therapy card. Mr. Merton was very distressed throughout the session. He arrived early exclaiming that his house had been broken into, but there were no signs of forced entry, and the assailant had only been in the kitchen. He had not reported it to the police as he believes the council were tormenting him and the police would be in on it. Jesus, this guy really does have a conspiracy boner going on here. Are we sure this isn't the origin story of Alex Jones or something? I advised Mr. Merton to clear his head and his kitchen, specifically moving things into the lounge. Hopefully this will trigger his memory. This is a worrying development. Clearly he cannot recall the incident in his kitchen. So I will review his diagnosis with colleagues and perhaps consider appropriate medication. In light of this, I have scheduled another session for tomorrow. Become toast. Okay, so we're in the lounge now. There's no toaster in sight and we're on the coffee table. How the hell do we become toast? Well, this is where you realize that this game isn't going to give you the easy win. You have to think outside of the box and come up with your own method of toasting yourself by exploring and paying attention to your surroundings to generate your own heat source. It actually took me a while on my first playthrough to work out that I needed to make my way over to the radiator in the room, turn it on, and then grip the side of it to toast myself. I really applaud Bosa Studios for trusting that the player's able to work all of this out on their own and in their own time too. You just know if companies like EA or Activision were to publish this game, there would just be no subtlety to this whatsoever. Everything would have to be spelt out for you, there would be waypoints to heat sources up the wazoo, the game would arrive half finished, and you just know, you just know that this game would be episodic and also that they would probably charge you per extra slice that you used. What's also great is that depending on how creative you are, you can use objects in the level to help you get around easier. You can even find hidden ways to toast yourself depending on what objects you choose to interact with and how you do it. The first level, for example, has a tiny rocket ship that you can knock over, which has a working thruster that you can actually toast yourself on. Or if perhaps the toaster is giving you too much trouble, you can also make your way over to the cooker hob and then cook yourself on that too. So, now we've conquered the lounge, let's move on to the next level and check out Mr. Merton's progress. Mr. Merton was distressed again during the session. He claimed his lounge had been broken into. He relayed his suspicions and believed he had discovered the culprit is leaving a message by placing a singular slice of toasted bread in the room. Okay, let's just take a moment to appreciate the idea of a criminal who leaves a slice of toasted bread at the scene of his crimes. Let's just, let's just soak in the glorious lameness of that idea, shall we? You've got this horrific crime scene. There's multiple dead bodies, bullet holes and blood up the walls. It's just unbelievably horrific. And then in the middle of it all, you've got this slice of perfectly toasted bread. <laughs> it wouldn't be ominous or threatening to you. It would be fucking hysterical. You'd be laughed out of a fucking courtroom. You'd probably be laughed out of prison. He claims the kitchen had a similar incident, but it never stood out to him at the time. He then appeared to be deep in thought for several minutes and left saying he was going to test a new theory that just came to him. Mr. Merton's condition seems to be deteriorating rapidly. 
The stress and paranoia are leading him to destroy his own home in what appears to be blackouts, leaving him with no memory of the incident. His fixation on blaming a slice of toast must be some sort of manifestation of his hate of the council, as the blackouts seem to be occurring as soon as he gets home from work. I'm going to increase the patient's condition to severe. We'll now maintain daily sessions for his own safety. Holy shit, man! This is escalating way beyond anything you would expect to see in a fun little game about playing as a sentient piece of bread. <laughs> what timeline is this? Where am I? Level 3, and now we're in possibly the most disgusting bedroom I think I have ever seen. Just look at the state of this place. There are bugs on the bed, mold on the walls, empty bottles of alcohol everywhere, and used plasters with blood on them. Ah, oh, gross. It really paints a picture of this guy's current mental state. He clearly does not give a single fuck anymore about personal hygiene or just basically anything. Something worth mentioning is if you touch certain objects like plasters, bugs, or anything else disgusting, they'll get stuck on you and decrease your edibility by a lot. So you either have to work extra hard to move past them, or find an alternative path somewhere else in the level. Like the last level, you have less space to be able to avoid touching the floor with, so you have to plan your route carefully. This is the first level to openly introduce multiple heat sources to the majority of players for the first time. There's a hot light bulb that's been left on the desk that you can use, or you can choose to land on the ironing board and use the iron to toast yourself instead. Both offer their own challenges in how you reach them, so it's left up to you to choose which one to go for to finish the level. This game does throw you a bone if you are having trouble beating a level. Fail a few too many times and a golden marmalade jar will spawn at the beginning of the level, which gives you infinite grip and infinite health. It's nice that they threw this in for casual players looking to complete the game and not have to worry about getting a high score. Okay, I think I've got the hang of this now, so let's move on to level 4 and see how our friends therapy session is going. Spoiler alert, not well! Mr. Merton came in very panicked this morning. He told me of his theory that the bread was somehow responsible for the incident. He then described how he placed the loaf of bread in his bedroom and returned to work to find that his bedroom had also been upturned with a singular slice of toast sitting amongst the mess. He left saying today would be the day he was sure his theory is correct. Okay, now we're getting to the juicy stuff. This guy is literally teetering on the brink of insanity and we're just along for the ride at this point. Nothing we can really do except just continue to make his life worse. <laughs> Level four now, and he's actually taken this loaf of bread and put it in the bathroom. What the hell? This is where the game really starts to flex its challenge muscles. You start off in the bathroom medicine cabinet with nothing in front of you except the cabinet door to grab onto. You're above the sink that's full of water, the floor is completely covered in puddles, and there's an open toilet to avoid too. God, this guy is a mess. He even has a jar of jam by the bathtub too, and yes, you can smash the jar, the somehow and cover yourself in the jam, not because it makes you taste better, but because it actually allows you to stick to walls to recover your grip. 10 out of 10. Eventually, though, you can burn yourself on the questionably placed electric radiator or by turning on this hairdryer. So now it's on to level 5, and our next chapter in this sprawling, epic tale of this man's slow descent into madness. And brace yourself, because it's about to get super fucking dark. I felt it was important to document today's events despite no official session, as Mr. Merton showed up to my house shouting that he wasn't crazy and that it was the bread all along. Clearly unhinged, I quietly told him to leave his car here and come with me to the office for another session. I rang ahead and arranged security to be ready. So we've gone from delusional conspiracy theorist to full-on yelling stalking lunatic. This really is the origin story of Alex Jones here, isn't it? It's only a matter of time now until he starts his own podcast where he's yelling about how the council is putting chemicals in the gluten to turn the friggin' bread gay. On the way to the office, he described to me how he'd locked the bread in the bathroom, and when he got home, a single slice had still managed to make itself into toast. Apparently, this was all the evidence he needed. We arrived at the office where I promptly had my men take Mr. Merton to a secure location. It was not safe to have him go home or be left by himself. He was immediately distressed, but mainly because he said the bin men were arriving tomorrow and the loaf was in the bin in his garage and had to be destroyed. He only calmed down when I promised to take his bins out for him when I dropped his car back off at his home. I already called some specialists and I will visit Mr. Merton tomorrow. I fear these sessions are the only normality he currently has in his life. Okay, okay, let's just, let's just, let's just, let's just take a moment to just, just, just kind of reflect about how far we've come here. We started off as a piece of bread, wanting nothing more than to become toast. And that was simple enough, but now we are embroiled 
in this dark and depressing tale about a man's slow loss of sanity to a point where he now thinks that a piece of bread has gained sentience with the express purpose of making his life miserable and tormenting him. So here we are. We're in the garage in a bin with a broken butter dish and some smashed plates. How the hell am I going to become toast here? Well, the obvious choice, I guess, would be the boiler in the corner of the garage, but getting there is another thing entirely. It really takes a lot of skill to navigate this level and make it to the other side, but if you persevere, you can make it to the upper racking of the garage and you'll have an easier way to get across. By the way, I just love all the titles for the fake books and movies in this game. Loaf Actually. Batch 22, The Encyclopedia, Bread Tanica, Little Bread Riding Hood, oh my god, Bread Walk Empire, I didn't see that one before, The the Cobbit, Sherloaf Holmes, The Chronicles of Nan, yeah. I th okay, I think I found the worst one. Oh, no, wait, hang on, there's Dante's Inferno. Yeah, no, I think that's the worst one. The second way you can finish the level is to make it to the lawnmower to turn it on and burn yourself on the overheating motor. Because when it turns on, it shoots right across to the other side of the room and then smashes into the corner. It actually really highlights just how much you are at the mercy of this game's physics, as you could just easily flip the mower over and die depending on how you affect it with your own positioning and momentum. Okay, next up is the garden level, a particularly tricky level indeed. But first, let's check up on our friend Mr. Merton's progress. <laughs> oh, Jesus! I visit visited Mr. Merton today. Despite his drowsiness from the medication we administered yesterday, we went ahead with the session. He was very adamant that I detailed exactly what I saw when I dropped off his car and if I had seen any slices of toast in his garage. I didn't recall seeing any slices of toast, though once I mentioned that some of his appliances were turned on, he became very alarmed. I tried to calm him down by mentioning that I did place his bins outside and while I did look at the loaf and it seemed just and it seemed like just an ordinary loaf of bread. Possible grammatical mistake there, methinks. He relaxed for a few seconds until I specified that I had left the loaf on top of the bins. This sent Mr. Merton into a panic as he lashed out and attempted to escape the room. Unfortunately, I had to end the session early by calling security to restrain him. Become toast! Ha! <laughs> okay, that one was the strongest. So we continue playing the role as the villain in this story by navigating from the top of these bins all the way across the entire garden and over to this barbecue. This level is hard. Not only do you start off at a really far away location, but you have just the bare minimum of safe objects or ledges to grab onto. It's brutal and an unforgiving test of your skill and coordination with no obvious safe path for you to take. So you have no choice but to really get creative in how you reach the goal. Leaps of faith and blind luck are your friends here. And you're going to need a lot of that luck to be able to stop yourself from hitting the floor and losing that all important sweet, 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 sweet edibility. edibility. But eventually with enough determination, I managed to grab a box of matches and light them up to toast myself on the barbecue. Ah, much better. So, we've made our way from the kitchen to the lounge, the bathroom, the garage, the garden, and now it's time for the final level. Where the hell is this game gonna send me next? After a night of distress shouting about a loaf of bread needing to be destroyed, the patient in question, Mr. Merton, was able to overpower two security guards at 8.37am this morning whilst breakfast was being delivered. He made his way through the facility and left for an action in the services lift. Mr. Merton was last seen running across the car park where he subsequently jumped the fence. The security guards called 999 at 8.55 a.m. to which point Mr. Merton had already left the premises. His therapist and all authorities have since been notified and are currently coordinating a search of the local area. This has now turned into the movie The Fugitive, but instead of Harrison Ford trying to clear his name, it's just some lunatic running around trying to destroy an evil piece of bread. I love this game. It just, just didn't need this type of story to just be here, but it put it in any way, and it's so much better for it. So just when you thought they'd run out of places to take you, here we are at a fucking petrol station. A place where you are never, ever supposed to use an open flame, otherwise you risk setting the whole place on fire. But I gotta do it. I gotta play the role of this stupid piece of bread desperate to become toast at any cost, even if in this case is potentially at the expense of human life. 
Also, is it just me, or does this particular bit of music sound awfully familiar? Okay, let's see what I can do here. Um, I could try yanking out one of the petrol pumps to make a puddle on the floor. Just a bit... Ah, there we go. That's it. Uh, I guess I could head over to this irresponsibly placed box of lighters and take one of them out to use it to set on fire. I'm uh, just gonna grab the edge and... and there we go. Spark it up a bit. Ah ha ha! Yes! I am a genius! I am the king of fire! I am the... Wait, what's happening? No, 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 no. This is... This, that's, too, that's too much fire now. Stop it! So we did it! We finally achieved toasting perfection! And it was by blowing up an entire neighborhood block to do it! But it's over now! It's done! Right? Only it isn't. We're still not done. There's still one level left to cap off the whole story in a really creepy and sinister way. To whom it may concern, it was the bread. It's always been the bread. It needs to become toast and it will stop at nothing. My house was the start, but it won't be the end. I was forced to escape the therapy barn. I should have destroyed the bread whilst I had the chance. Now there's been an explosion across town and I know it's the bread. I'm going to find that cursed loaf and end this once and for all. Mr. B. Merton. Notice this time there's no happy message telling us to become toast. Notice there's no happy sounding Randy Newman-esque music playing. Notice there's no edibility bar. Now notice that you're in the trunk of a car being driven out of town to be brutally murdered in the woods with an axe. Ah, oh, well that shift was so fucking violent it actually made my head do a 360. So yep, our single solitary purpose now is to escape from the trunk of his car, which is still moving by the way, and startle the guy so bad that he has a near fatal car crash. Oh, 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 oh! And just when you think it's all over for this poor guy, the game ends on a cliffhanger where Mr. Merton is pulled out from the wreckage by the hand from the character of Surgeon Simulator 2013. Yes, I Am Bread is a prequel to Surgeon Simulator, and the patient you operate on is the same guy from this very car crash that was caused by a piece of vindictive sentient bread. Amazing. Simply amazing. Fuck Endgame, this is the crossover of the century right here. Is that smoke? Where the hell is that coming from? Okay, what the hell is going on here? Yeah.